Welcome to the ITU studio in Geneva, where I'm very pleased to be joined by Mr. Atul Mehta, who is the Director of Telecommunications, Media and Technology for Venture Capital and, and Funds for the International Finance Corporation, the IFC. Mr. Mehta, thank you very much for joining us today. Delighted to be here. Now, I'd like to start off by uh, talking a little bit about uh, a subject which I know you're going to be talking about um, in a, a panel session here. Uh, very much, uh, perhaps you could tell us a little bit about the, the public and private sectors. How can they, they can work together and accelerate digital inclusion, which is uh, very much in everybody's minds nowadays? Certainly, Bax. Uh, let, me, let me backtrack a little bit and talk about why 2018 is significant. This year, more than 15% of the world's population will be using the internet. That's the good news. The bad news is the growth rate is slowing dramatically. So urgent attention is needed to determine what will it take for more people to use the internet. There are two sides to the equation. Supply, uh, that is providing the networks, and demand, providing the products that people want to use. That's where the public and private sector need to come together to address both sides of the equation. Right, and so basically what does that mean for the consumer? Well, for the consumer, what we're finding is today half the world's population is not using the internet. Actually, two-thirds of that portion that's not using the internet has coverage. They either just do not have affordable access to the internet or they don't have the product that they would want to use on the internet. So what the public and private sector need to do is determine what are the types of products. It may be government services. It may be social media. It may be the ability to undertake financial transactions. And it certainly is a different model for the provision of services. So the affordability question is addressed. So artificial intelligence, the Internet of Things, they're not even on the radar for these people. Well, I think eventually they'll be on the radar, but you've got to build up gradually. You've got to first address their current needs. You know, Their current needs are the provision of services they need on a day-to-day -day basis, completing the transactions they undertake, These uh, the provision of food, health, education. All these services are today available over the internet, but most people are not partaking uh, through the internet. So make it easier for them to be able to undertake those type of transactions over the internet. By giving them the tools, the education? Well, I think the, the first step, obviously, is building the infrastructure. Once you build the infrastructure, and this is where you need a different model. Uh, in old mobile telephony, you could just bid out the spectrum and the private sector would come in and build their own networks. That's not going to lower the cost to a point where most of these people come on. You need shared infrastructure. You need regulators working together with the private sector to determine, okay, how do we get one backbone rather than three competitors building their own backbones? So that needs a public-private partnership. Then you go in, you build the networks in a more efficient manner, you reduce the average cost per user, and then you start to bring the services online. You encourage entrepreneurship. You get governments to build platforms where government services may be provided. Uh, so there are different models in different countries which can be replicated depending on the circumstances. Now the cost of a handset nowadays is, is pretty minimal, yes. but yet people are still not connected. No, and I think uh, the, the handset used to be a major issue, right? That's coming down. You've got $50 smartphones now. Feature phones are also being used for many of the services we're talking about. But the cost of data is still an impediment for many people. Provision of service is still an impediment for many people. And then the services they need in their particular geography. I mean, Facebook is all well and good, but you also need something that addresses your day-to-day -day needs. And those services are currently not being provided in many jurisdictions. And we've heard of pe people uh, have talked about very much about, you know, we were talking about the 5G generation. However, there's, there's many people here, they're still moving on from 3 and, and 4G. So uh, the speed uh, of access to, to Absolutely. information is, is pretty still pretty slow in some places. So we've seen that even with 2G, you can have very successful services like M-Pesa in Kenya. So that's very well known. But you do need 3G and beyond for many of the other things you were talking about. If you ever want to get to IoT, you're going to need 3, 4G, possibly 5G, right? Same thing with artificial intelligence. So there, there is a chicken and egg involved. So what types of investments is the IFC seeing in the private sector pursuing in this space across the emerging markets? So we're seeing uh, investments obviously being taken by telecom companies to expand their networks to try and move up. For the most part, in most emerging markets, it's still a 3G, unfortunately. Uh, not all emerging markets have effective 3G coverage. So there's a lot of work being done there. The type of investments that we would like to see more of 
is what I was mentioning in the beginning, some of the backbone investments, uh, which would allow for 3G and 4G to take place more easily. If everyone needs to build their own backbones, it's going to be expensive, and then you will not have the demand uh, pick up. So you're stuck in a vi vicious circle rather than a virtuous cycle. And what about the big bugbears, cyber security? How, how can uh, we uh, protect ourselves in, in that, uh, in the case of uh, obviously malicious uh, intent? So th this is a rapidly evolving area, and for good reason, it's getting more and more attention. Uh, there are uh, companies out there offering products uh, for protection. The telecom companies themselves are working to address their networks, and, and I think for anyone, any country planning its network or any company, this is a key area that they need to focus on. Finally, we're here at the Global Symposium for Regulators. What should regulators be uh, be listening to, do you think, in in terms of advice and in, in terms of, uh, of future planning? So I think the main thing I would advise to regulators is this is a new paradigm. I think in many countries we find that the paradigm that existed, which very successfully brought voice and mobile telephony, is still in place. It hasn't evolved to the needs of digital connectivity. And part of it is uh, governments, not just regulators, have got comfortable with the revenues they get from the telecom industry. Uh, today it's an imperative to get the telecoms industry to invest. Regulations need to change. They need to encourage infrastructure sharing. Uh, they need to be brought up to date in order to encourage these type of investments. That's all, Mr. Thank you very much indeed. Thank you. Pleasure to be here. And you'll find uh, many more valuable and uh, interesting insights uh, on the ITU YouTube channel and, of course, uh, podcasts on the ITU YouTube SoundCloud. One more time, please. Uh, <coughs> here we go. And uh, you'll find uh, many more valuable insights at the ITU YouTube channel and the ITU SoundCloud channel, and we hope uh, you'll tune in to uh, get more of those. Thank you very much indeed. Thank, Thank you. Thanks. Pleasure.